In step 8, let's take the ISOs you created in the previous step and insert them into a new computer connected to the network to which you wish to install one of the Windows images you have deployed. Note, be sure to configure the BIOS to boot off of the device that contains the ISO, be it CD-ROM, flash drive, removable hard drive, whatever. Okay, so now we're on a brand new machine with a blank hard drive. No partitions, no formatting, no data, nothing. No operating system, so we couldn't boot up off of it. And we don't have the Windows 7 installation DVD, or I don't have the ISO on pen drive Linux. But in this case, we're, we want to perform the installation across the network from our deployment server that we set up in Active Directory. So we took our ISO that was created um, after we you know, finished our task sequence or configuring it. Remember it made a 64 and 32-bit ISO. Well, I burned the 32-bit ISO to a CD-ROM. It was less than, a little bit less than 200 megabytes. So I put, I put that in the uh, CD-ROM drive, and we're going to boot up off of that. But just make sure that you'll need to go into the BIOS and make sure you configure the main board of the computer to boot off the CD-ROM. Remember that it's not always configured to do so, and it might try to just boot off the hard drive and tell you that there's no operating system. So in this case, blank hard drive, new, new machine, no operating system on it. We configure the BIOS to boot up off of the CD-ROM drive. We put the CD in that we burned, the ISO that we made, and now let's hit enter and start the boot process. This will load the, uh, the light version, the pre-boot environment. I love those little windows twirly things, whatever they are, the color blobs that make the, it is kind of cool, and then the, you know, the blinking on and off, it. not as cool as the little Cylon bar thing that slides up and down across the bottom when you use sysprep and have it go into, uh, you know, run, run the setup wizard, that, that's just the coolest ever, Cylons rule! So no operating system, blank hard drive, no partition or nothing, double negative, anything, whatever. Uh, um, we're booting up off that ISO. Microsoft Solution Accelerators. Da -da -da. They make it sound so extreme. Okay, now we have some menu options here. Run the deployment wizard to install a new operating system, and this is the one we want to choose, but you could also run the Windows Recovery Wizard, exit to a command prompt if you want to run a command prompt. I have DHCP set up in Active Directory, so if things are working properly, we should simply be able to lease an IP via DHCP. But if you were having problems or issues, or you did not have DHCP set up, be aware that you could also click here and configure a static IP address and set up your IP settings that way. Of course you could reboot, but what would be the point in that? So let's run the deployment wizard to install a new operating system and try to use our, our pristine, uh, newly set up and configured Active Directory and DHCP setup in our deployment Windows 7 server. So by you know with, with the combined help of both Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, maybe uh, Ironhide can uh, you know be deployed or deploy himself. Or I'm not sure how you syntactically make that phrase, but whatever. Yeah, English was not my best subject. Come on. Okay, so now I need to supply the credentials for connecting to my deployment server, my Windows 7 uh, workstation with the deployment tools kit installed and the images loaded. They're shared out, and um, also make sure that you configure your firewall to allow traffic through um, in this case, I you know set up network browsing, and you may have to loosen the permissions on your firewall to get it to connect. So if you have connection problems, um, maybe temporarily disable the firewall on your Windows 7 image deployment server, and see if that doesn't alleviate things. Other problems you might have if your you know DNS information is incorrect. So just just trying to give you some ideas for troubleshooting if you do have problems. But in this case, I've you know I've temporarily disabled my firewall just to make sure that there are no, no issues there, no ports being blocked, or NetBIOS, or anything for browsing, or ICMP, or ping, or whatever that need to be in place to pull this image across the network. And uh, administrator, 
for the local administrator account on the Windows 7 machine, and also my Active Directory administrator account. Um, I you know, made the password the same, so capital P at SSW0RD is my password. And again, you know, for security purposes, you'd probably want to keep that account disabled locally and you know, not give out your Active Directory password, but this isn't this tutorial is not about security. It's just trying to make it as easy as possible so we can quickly go through the setup process of configuring uh, you know, the deployment toolkit and deploying images across the network. So my domain is Autobots. Autobots to administrator, my password Autobots to domain name, and click on OK. OK, and so now it's been able to connect to the deployment server. And I'm going to select the Autobots transformation deployment. Remember that was the um, you know the task sequence that we configured earlier, and that we created. That's what we called it. The computer name in this case it's going to be Ironhide. Next, join a domain. Yes, we want to join the Autobots. And I'm going to click on next. And um, do not want to restore user data and settings, so next. The language, going to go with the defaults next. Um, the time zone, well we're not Pacific, we're Eastern. Everyone knows that the Autobots are on the East Coast, right? East Coast, East Coast Autobots. No, but, um, and I'm sure I passed right over it. Where is, where is Eastern time? There we go, Eastern Time, US and Canada. Next, administrator password, funky password, and la parágima, por favor, se empuja. I'm not going to use BitLocker. And ready to begin, and begin. And this will therefore begin the installation process. And again, I'll try to cut to the chase. I just want you to see what it looks like if you successfully implement it, what you will see. So I will video part of this, but to not bore you and make this video, it, it, it's already excessively long, but to not make it any longer than it has to be, I will fast forward through this to the end once I let you know, I, I just want you to see what, once this you see this screen, and it actually begins copying files from the image on the deployment server, and it connects to Active Directory, then you're, you're pretty much home free. You can walk away and come back when it's all done and your new computer will be configured. Meanwhile at the Autobot headquarters, while it's doing this, in the meantime, I'm going to hop on Optimus Prime and open up my DHCP server. And I just want you to see that uh, even though it's not, doesn't it actually have an operating system? I mean, we started with a blank hard drive. That little light PE pre-built environment ISO that we created and booted up off of was enough to like initialize a mini TCP IP stack and to complete the four step DHCP handshake process and actually lease an IP from the DHCP server. So if I come over here and open, let me open our, my scopes here. And let me get on here to the Autobots transform scope. And I'll show you the leases. Right? And if I show you the leases, notice that here they are. All right? So via DHCP, we have Bumblebee. Um, and actually, eventually, I'd probably want to make him a static IP, too. Or at least make him uh, maybe a reservation on his MAC address or something. But that's exclusions, reservations, um, DHCP, a whole other series of videos and tutorials. And when you want to get into that, you know, at your leisure, at your option, um, then you can choose. And if you want to watch this, try to keep it brief so I won't go into that here. But I did want you to notice that. Notice there's a little miniature, you know, look, here's here's our... I haven't even really installed an operating system yet. We're formatting right now and installing from the image system, but notice that using the light PE environment that we booted up off of, it was able to lease an IP address from the domain controller, the DHCP server Optimus Prime, and then connect to Bumblebee, which is the you know the deployment toolkit and the Windows image server, and then now it's installing an image. And then we'll now I'm gonna go back to the empty computer where we're installing the image and let you see what that looks like. The new computer, Ironhide, is continuing to build itself from the image we deployed across the network. Alright, and now we're on the empty computer, and again, I'm just showing you what it looks like. 
it's installing Windows, um, you know, utilizing that WIM, the, the Windows image file. Now that it's connected and at least an IP address, and we have our deployment toolkit set up and all. And, you know, again, I'll cut to the chase and go to the end so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But if you get this far, you have been successful. Take yourself a well earned coffee break. And at this point, from here on out, you can install Windows from your deployment server anywhere on your network. No Windows 7 DVD required. A little while later, and again, just a little further along in the image install process. Uh, but I have to go to work now, so I can't stick around. Maybe when I come back, I'll do one last clip showing you the, the finished product. And Iron, Ironhide will be ready to go and uh, have joined the Autobots for their mission against the Decepticons. After returning from work that evening, Okay, and as you can see, um, at this point I'd type in the key, and we'd activate Windows and reboot, and there would be Ironhide. <laughs>